Hi everyone, it's me! And today, viruses! Let's learn about parasites and viruses! Together! This video is sponsored by Oculus. Thank you. No, 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 no. Now I'm done. Something like that cannot exist in real life, right? Yeah, it cannot be. Right? 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 Oh, it can exist. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. Wow. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. Hi. <laughs> Bro. Today we're talking Bro. about one of the most important horror games of all time, Resident Evil 4. A game full of iconic scares and iconic <gasps> one-liners. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Why am I covering <laughs> it now after 16 long years? Well, the game was just rebuilt in VR and is now new to experience in the Oculus Quest 2, which is... Mm, we should think about it. It's very awesome if you think about it. 16 years is nearly two decades. Two, nearly two decades. It's actually very true to the history of this title. You see, the original Resi 4 made a huge change for the franchise. Not only did you have horrifying new enemies, but the camera was no longer fixed. It actually followed you, allowing you to be more immersed in the horrors and sickles that were being thrown directly at your face. And now, thanks to Oculus Quest 2, the immersion is just on a whole nother level. This isn't just any <laughs> VR port, the whole thing has been rebuilt from the ground up using stereoscopic 3D to enhance the tension that comes from survival horror. Physically cranking levers, winding up your arms to throw a grenade, rounding oh. a corner only to have a monster literally appearing Ooh. in your face. My wow. <laughs> okay, please don't do that. A bit scary. Mm -hmm. Monsters that, quite frankly, were the other massive evolution for the franchise. Up to this point in its history, Resident Evil had always been a series about zombies, the slow, shuffling, shambling enemies that we're all familiar with. But let's face it, by the time Resident Evil 4 came out, our hero Leon Kennedy had seen it all. He was no longer just a small town cop. Resident Evil 4 showed Leon taking up the mantle of a US federal agent. It's like he has leveled up from a noob, become a legend. Something like that. And so, as Leon himself leveled up, the enemies needed to as well. Zombies? T-Virus? G-Virus? Nope! Leave those back in Raccoon City! Instead, RE4 pits Leon up against an entirely new class of enemies birthed from the Las Plagas Parasites. These guys handle weapons, Parasites. they can hold conversations, they use ladders, and wow. zombies do not use ladders. Heck, one of them is able to maintain his basic capitalist instincts. What are you buying? The Ganados Villagers, these victims of the Las Plagas Parasite, they're strategic and eager to kill putting more pressure than ever on Leon to keep a cool head, otherwise he risks losing it. And Okay, a bit gruesome, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That got me wondering. Not the head stuff, of course, but the parasite thing. Obviously, the change away from the viral zombies from the previous titles was to make the game's enemies smarter, more capable, and thus more of a threat, but seriously... And more engaging if you think about it. Would a parasite really make that much of a difference? Like, is this really how a parasite would work? The distinction between virus and parasite seems like the kind of thing only a super pedantic pathology nerd would care about. Which means it's completely on brand for an episode of Game Theory. Yeah! <laughs> Here's the thing, friends. It does actually make a difference. In fact, the more you dig into the real-world science of what parasites are capable of, the more terrifying the events of Resident Evil 4 start to look. Huh. Interesting. So, tell me more. I'm intrigued. So which real-world parasite is our best guess for the Las Plagas Plague? Let's find out. By starting with the basic distinction between viruses and parasites. I think we have a good understanding of what a virus is because of the global pandemic due to the... Mm -hmm. virus. If I get infected with either, I still get sick, so are they really all that different? Well, considering that we wouldn't have an episode if they weren't, you can probably guess that the answer here is a resounding yes. Parasites are living organisms that'll infect a host in order to help its own survival. They can vary from single-celled protozoa to multicellular creatures like tapeworms. Viruses, on the other hand, aren't living organisms. They have no cellular structure and thus can only reproduce when there are cells to infect. This immediately shows us why parasites would be an obvious choice when Resident Evil needed new types 
types of enemies, they are far more complex biologically. Therefore, they offer some interesting new opportunities for monster creation with new abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. For example, one of the key features of the Plagas Parasite is its ability to control whatever host it comes into contact with. During the course of Resident Evil 4, we come across research notes from biologist Dr. Louis Serra, and he okay. talks specifically about this, quote, There are some parasites that have the ability to control their host. Control the host! He then goes on to list the names of some parasites, all of which are 100% real, by the way. I thought this would make my job a heck of a lot easier, but... Whoa, they actually included real, actual viruses? Oh wait, yeah, parasites, I'm sorry. But no, Lewis only lists three examples, all of which basically do the same thing. So if we're gonna crack the real-world equivalent of what the Las Plagas is, I need to dust off the old parasite encyclopedia to find it myself. The f um, wait. Why do you even have an encyclopedia for parasites? Why? First and most obvious contender for the Plagas Parasite is a personal favorite for this channel. We've covered it a fair bit over the last 10 years of episodes, and thus far I've tried my best not to repeat myself too much, except of course for my feelings on some franchises that shall remain anonymous. But when talking about parasites that control the infected's behavior, you always have to mention Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. Cordyceps, for sure. We actually talked about this one in both our Last of Us and Super Mario Toad theories, but basically the O unilateralis fungus infects certain ant species, causing them to behave in some very wow. uncharacteristic ways. Rather than sticking to the trails of their ant buddies, infected ants head to an area where the parasite can thrive, seeking out ideal temperature and humidity conditions for its parasitic puppeteer. Then, the ant attaches itself to the underside of a leaf, resigned to death as the parasite completely takes over. Re like controlling with a strings. Repurposing the ant's body to serve as an incubator for its spores. This level of complicated behavior is just not something a virus is capable of. There are viral infections that cause changes in behavior, most famously the rabies virus, which causes inflammation in the brain that triggers delirium, paranoia, and aggression, but fundamentally, a virus isn't controlling its carrier's behavior like a puppet master. Parasites, on the other hand, like we saw with the cordyceps, are biologically complex enough to induce specific behaviors in the host. Also, the spore-based transmission of cordyceps isn't so different from what we see happen with the Ganado villagers in Resident Evil 4, many of whom become infected with a primitive form of the Plagas parasite from working in an underground mine where they're oh. infected through airborne exposure. But the Las Plagas airborne. Parasite isn't just about mind control, it is so, so much more, as you come to learn playing through Resident Evil 4. The real terror here isn't getting attacked by a pitchfork-wielding villager, but the possibility of getting infected yourself. When you huh. go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some Plaga variants, you're not just dealing with the infected host, but the possibility mm -hmm. of getting attacked by the parasite itself. E Double track! Even after it separates from its host. Literally... Prepare for trouble and make it double. Like the Plaga sea enemies, which, upon reaching full maturity, have the parasite looking like a giant spider, erupting wow. from the host's head, jumping out at ya. We see something similar with the Colmeos enemies as well, the result of the Plaga parasite infecting wolves, where again, the parasite can leap directly from the wolf host over to you in your VR headset. I guess they're leaping at Leon, but still, it is you in your VR headset, and it is horrific. Parasites emerging from the original host's body to attack a new host? That is not something that you're gonna see with the likes of Cortis. But it is a tactic that you'll see with other real-world parasites. Going back to Dr. Louis Serra's in-game research notes, he specifically calls out the Leucochloridium parasite, a parasite uh -huh. that has one of the most bizarre and disturbing tactics that you'll ever see in nature, like, ever. Wow. Why does it even exist in the first place? In nature. This thing develops inside the eye stalks of snails where it then pulsates a bright color to make the host highly visible and highly attractive to predators like birds. It also makes the snail look like it's just absolutely tripping out. The unsettling part of all this happens when you realize what exactly is going on here. The leucochloridium parasite controls its host's behavior, making the snail crawl into positions where it's most likely to be spotted by the predator and eaten. I mean, this colorful glowing thing inside the eyes is basically just a giant billboard screaming, eat me, eat me, while the snail just waits helplessly for its inevitable death. And once wow. that death does come and the parasites inside the bird's body, the leucochloridium is able to fully mature into its adult form and begin reproducing. All this leaves me with no. just one question. Can it reproduce inside a human's body? No? Great. I was just starting to draft up my letter to the French. One bad escargot and the Plagas apocalypse is here. What's more, this demonstrates another example of the behavior that we see with the Plagas parasite. Not just the ability to migrate from host to host, but the ability to survive for limited periods of time outside of the host's body body in, in different species and that's what mutation is about different variants and 
Like the Delta variant, for example. In the case of Leucochloridium, it spends most of its life cycle traveling up the food chain, from snail to predatory bird. But in order to start the cycle all over again, it has to travel back down to the bottom of the food chain, usually by getting pooped out of the bird in its larval form, surviving without a host until it gets picked up by a snail. Something that a virus just wouldn't be able to do. Still, that's just scratching the surface. A villager getting infected and acting aggressive? It makes sense. A parasite maturing into a spider form that can jump out of its original host's body? Yeah, it changes out, horrifically enough, but some of the most terrifying enemies that we see in Resident Evil 4 are cases where the Plagueis Parasite has not only infected and controlled the host, but has also enhanced their abilities. The enhanced. Regenerator is a great example of this in the game, where the Plagueis Parasite has given this monster the ability to rapidly regenerate portions of its body. Surely, wow. a Parasite is not able to do this, right? Right? Normally, I would be using this to build up to a really big twist here, but no. No, it, it actually isn't. There is not a Parasite that can cause you to regrow limbs. But yeah. the idea of a parasite Like um wait, wait wait what if you are like a starfish oh, I'm sorry it was on different mechanics I'm I'm sorry Enhancing your abilities? Yeah, that is a real thing. Take the Hymenoapimacis argarifaga parasitic wasp of Costa Rica. The wasp pretends to be caught in a spider's web, lying in a vulnerable position and waiting for the spider to approach until the wasp springs into action, repeatedly wow. stinging the spider over and over until the spider is completely paralyzed. The wasp then invades the spider's body by gluing its own eggs to the spider. The spider does eventually get control of its body again, but once the wasp larvae hatch, they release a chemical cocktail that causes the spider to spin a special web cocoon for them. What's fascinating is that the cocoon-like web structure that the spider spins is nothing like the webs that they construct naturally. Once it's spun the cocoon, the spider is killed off by the larvae and used as a food source while they wait to pupate. Although the spider doesn't get to use its newfound powers more than once, it's proof that parasites can indeed give you superpowers, enhancing your natural abilities beyond the norm. But of course, the game takes it one step further. The Plaga's parasite can also wildly mutate its host, like El Gigante, reaching monstrous proportions. Whoa! My... What the... Wow! Or the Del Lago Lake Monster, a small salamander whose genes were mutated by the Los Illuminados and became large enough to practically swallow a boat. These are full-on mutations resulting from the Plagueis Parasite's continual effect on the host over time. Can real-life parasites cause massive mutation? Well, and different species as well. Wouldn't you know it, but researchers at Stanford University's Department of Biology and UC Berkeley's Department of Environmental Science released a paper titled, quote, The Evolution of Mutation Rate in an Antagonistic Coevolutionary Model with maternal transmission of parasites. That's big. Okay, let me just try to read it out first. The evolution of mutations rate in an antagonic, uh, okay, antagonistic uh, co-evolutionary model with maternal transmissions of parasites. Basically, the more academic way of saying parasites cause evolution big time fast. In big short, evolution fast. is an arms race. Parasites are constantly trying to evolve to become better at being parasites, which causes the hosts to constantly try to evolve to become less susceptible to parasites. In essence, they're forcing each other to evolve faster. Honestly, it's nearly impossible to predict what type of mutations these parasites would introduce. They might give you super strength, or you could lose your head. It's really a huge gamble. Unless, I suppose, you were genetically modified or selectively breeding these parasites to obtain certain traits, which might what? force a particular kind of evolutionary response. Oh wait, that's exactly what the Los Illuminados are doing in Resident Evil 4. So wow. there you have it, friends. At the moment, we're safe. The different abilities of parasites seem to be sticking to different strains of them, rather than them all coming together to form a super parasite like the Los Plagas. But who's to say that, given enough time, these parasites couldn't start to adopt similar traits to one another? Oh and evolve and mutate and be better to infect different species. <sighs> Just like the current global pandemic that we're experiencing right now due to the virus. But this is parasites. All I gotta say to that is this. Someone keep an eye on the president's daughter. If she goes missing, then it's time for us to panic. But hey, one final big thank you to Oculus and Capcom for sponsoring today's video. It's actually funny, our Resident Evil 2 theory from a few years ago about the T-Virus and its accuracy actually showed that game being relatively true to real world science as well. So good on you- Yep. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's about versus in a global pandemic period. Mm -hmm. Not the best. Across the board, Capcom, you haven't just created an incredible horror franchise with a long legacy, but you also appeased a science nerd like me. And now- It was too true to heart. 
It was true, but too correct. Now you can experience it all up close and personal thanks to stereoscopic 3D environments. If you haven't already, play one of the best horror games ever in what is, in my hashtag not sponsored opinion, the best VR headset ever, the Oculus Quest 2. It's like playing a completely new game. So see the horror up close and personal for yourself. Link is down in the description below for more details. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's very educational and I hope that you learned something new today in the video. Thank you so much for watching this video together with me. And if you do like this video, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share of us. Don't forget to follow my channel and I sincerely appreciate all of your support for me. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY! And thanks for watching. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Subscribe! <laughs> thanks so much. Oh my god, I'm, I nearly messed up. I just now nearly messed up. <laughs>